Augusta Augusta is definitely somewhere that I need to go at some point. Very much the Holy Grail. And uh, actually, funnily enough, I did have an invite to go. Like, I mean, it's a long story, but someone at the someone at the PGA Tour got in touch with me about three days before the tournament started. This was uh, last year, and it was like just too too late notice for me to like sort everything out and find somewhere to stay and like you know sort out childcare and all that stuff so I couldn't I couldn't do it and I was gutted because like, it was the first time I've ever had even the option so but yeah I said look invite me next time give me a bit more give me a bit more notice and <laughs> yeah All right, welcome everyone to the Whole Story Podcast. We really appreciate you joining us this week, whether you're listening to the podcast or even watching it on YouTube. Uh, we've got a great guest we will tell you about here in a second, especially for you YouTube uh, viewers. You'll want to uh, stop our video and go check out his stuff. But uh, Jonathan, why don't you give us a quick little recap of, uh, of what happened in golf this weekend? Yeah, so I mean, again, tournaments are uh, wrapping up. We're about ready to head into the FedEx Cup. And so the Wyndham Championship... Uh, happened this weekend. Lucas Glover decided to take the win. And then over in the LPGA, we had uh, a back-to-back -back by Celine Boudier. Uh, nice to come back. I, I guess it feels pretty good to win two tournaments in a row. I think it's the first time since 2016 that there's been really anybody back-to-back. -back. So uh, major championship, and then you follow up with a little bit of extra purse money. So maybe she'll go on vacation or do something nice. Might as well keep playing, uh, keep, keep winning it, right? That's right. And uh, also, I'd, I'd like to tip a hat to uh, DeChambeau. He decided that he could find his golf game this weekend and went low for a little bit. Uh, I think Phil Mickelson was upset. He said he copied his jump at the end because he was excited. I don't even know. I mean, even on the live tournament, I don't even know how long it's been since DeChambeau has won. But apparently he made some adjustments with his driver and putted fairly well, too. So, yeah. But as always, we're not here to talk about golf, right, Robbie? Absolutely. Well, we do want to give one shout out, Jonathan, to one of our early guests, uh, Eli that. Kirsch, right? Eli so, Kirsch. So, uh, yeah. Sam, well, we had this guest, a father-son duo, Eli's 11, and he was playing in the Pinehurst area at the U.S. Kids World Championship over the weekend. I, I don't think he won, but he got a he got a hole in one uh, at Talamore. So I want to give Eli a shout out. It was great. But yeah, so let me kind of give a rundown of our guests real quick. So Jonathan, I think this is our first. Oh, we did have a yeah, we did have a rapper. So our second, second musical guest. I'm sorry, uh, but second musical guest uh, to be joining us on the podcast. Another person from around the world. Uh, Sam lives in England. Like Jonathan, Sam's left-handed, so Jonathan, another connection there. Um, Sam, I don't know if you're still doing this, but uh, I saw somewhere that you were selling sheet music uh, as kind of the the day job. Maybe maybe the other stuff has taken over, but but our guest is a well-known singer and songwriter. Uh, well-known songs like "I Swear," the Terrell Hatton song, "The Power of Team Love," which highlighted President Cup, uh, especially for the U.S. And then a couple of the favorites, when will Tony Finau win again and the day that Tony Finau won again? So we might have the biggest Tony Finau fan on the podcast so far, but Sam, uh, Harrop, welcome to the Whole Story Podcast. Thanks for being here. Hey, thank you for having me on. It's good to be here. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for, first of all, taking some time from the other side of the pond. We've been, uh, I've been traveling a little bit, so I was just north of you, so uh, before we get to the golf, how did you get involved in the music side of things? Like, where where does that come from? I mean, the music side of things really is kind of came before the golf. I mean, that was really early on in my life. I started having uh, piano lessons. Well, I think I was probably seven at the time, seven or eight. Um, and then I was singing from quite a young age. Um, I was in, like, the school choir, you know, like all the cool kids. Uh, and... Yeah, it was music was always the kind of that was always the thing that I went to as a as a kid, um, and then it just it kind of grew really. You know, I started, uh, you know, I started writing my own my own little pieces. You know, when I was younger, and then you know, I, I did all the kind of the grades on piano. Um, I don't know if it's, it's probably a different system in the US, but here you have you kind of you go through the grades up to grade eight, and then. And then once you go beyond that, you kind of choose what you want to do. Um, you know, I didn't want to be a kind of performer in the 
traditional sense on the piano. Um, but I wanted to do something with it. Um, and I used to do a bit of songwriting after that. Um, I joined an acapella group in London, uh, which, I, which I did for, for many years. And then, yeah, this, this golf thing, kind of this golf idea, I guess, came came to me one day. And that's kind of been the thing for the last, well, nearly nearly four years now. Yeah, absolutely. So we mentioned the the YouTube piece and, and uh, all, all the listeners or viewers want to check you out there. But I mean, you are very well known in the YouTube world for your kind of uh, tributes or, or parodies of these professional golfers and even now some events and stuff. So what what was the inspiration behind that? Like what, you know, did you play golf growing up? How, how did you first say, man, I want to I want to do this? well go golf was always kind of something that i liked from a reasonably young age like i remember going to like the pitch and putt with my parents and my two brothers we used to do that so we used to really enjoy that i was never very good um and that has remained the case um but uh it was it was always good fun i used to really enjoy going out and playing golf and it came to a point like i used to watch the majors with my dad i remember that and um he used to because i being a lefty um, he was always like, I mean, he, he wasn't a lefty, but it, because he knew I was a lefty, he'd always point out the kind of, you know, the left-handed player. So back then it was kind of, uh, Phil Mickelson was one of the few really back in, you know, we're talking 20, 25 years ago. So whenever I watch you know, on the majors with him, I'd kind of like, you know, gravitate towards Phil Mickelson. He's the guy who hits, hits the ball from the same side as me. Right. Um, and my dad would occasionally have a, put a bet on Phil Mickelson for me so like he'd give me he'd give me the betting slip you know <laughs> probably when I was like I don't know 14 or 15 or something um so that kind of an invested interest in that um and then yeah I started watching you know I started watching some of the uh, other tournaments uh, and then it became like I was watching the most weeks uh, it just became a thing and then you develop a bit of a knowledge about the players and the tournaments and everything uh so you have a kind of a bit of a encyclopedia in your mind about about golf and then i just put it together with the with the music thing and i thought oh, maybe there's something in this you know maybe you can make a a couple of songs out of you know out of golf, something different because at that point i was just doing covers on youtube which a million people are doing and probably half a million are doing it better than me so although i need to do something slightly different uh and that was yeah and that that's kind of how it started so who was the first golfer that uh, you picked out? And <laughs> do you remember what that song was? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, it was, um, that was the Tony Fino one, the first Tony Fino one. When will Tony Fino win again? Because, um, yeah, he'd been through this spell, you know, of not winning uh, for, I think it was about four years um, or maybe longer than that after he won Puerto Rico. He'd gone through this big dry spell, had a lot of runner-up finishes or gone close. And it just felt like there was a, a narrative in that, you know, when's, when's he going to win? So I just got this idea and, and that was the first one. And and because he kind of engaged with it, you know, when I posted it on Twitter, you know, he he commented, um, you know, he was like, oh, I just watched this with my uncle. We were laughing the whole time. It was, you know, and it was, that was so cool, you know, and it just it really it kind of made the whole thing blow up because, you know, when, when you get someone like that, you know, who's a very popular player and he's got a big following uh, to sort of lend you know, credibility to the, to the piece, if you like, it just, yeah, that, that took it to a different level. And then, and then I just kept doing them after that because then lockdown hit and I was sort of at home a lot more. So I had time to kind of think up these ideas and, and that's when it became like a, a thing really, because I started doing them relatively regularly and, and it was just, it, it just became my thing. It's, it's strange. That's great. Well then well done to follow up when he did win and uh and come back with a a part two of that song that was that was great have you had yeah, any well, he... opposite response where you posted it out there and all of a sudden you get like instant you get messages going hey take this down this is terrible <laughs> <laughs> you know what incredibly that hasn't happened yet um i've always been quite careful to kind of to to get the line right between kind of taking a piss but not going below the belt you know uh and i think i've always managed managed to find the line in the right place so i haven't really upset anyone or at least to my knowledge but, but i did see somewhere uh maybe when you we first wrote a song about the the live or or i can't remember what the song title was but did you get blocked by phil is that right <laughs> yeah your, your favorite yeah, golfer right. growing yeah. up i mean i know i know it's wild i mean you know he was my favorite golfer growing up and you know i did a song about him as well um you know i think two two three or three years ago and um yeah i uh 
I mean, he went through this spell of blocking a lot of people. Uh, I don't know whether it's him or someone on his team or whatever, but uh, anyone who was sort of questioning his his, his actions or, or, or his morals or whatever, uh, anyone who sort of called him to question got blocked. And I was just one of the many that, that, that fell foul of, uh, of that. So, uh, yeah, and then... Uh, what the live song was uh, the first live song I've done a few now actually was uh, growing the game and that was kind of in a reaction to that to, to the, the the blocking you know it was yeah that's kind of where it will spawn that that song well we do want to make sure Phil if you're listening I'm sure you are uh, we want to mend some bridges here so Sam is more than willing to come meet you next year at the Augusta National we'll coordinate if you, if you need a place to stay Phil I've got an extra room as well <laughs> Uh, and maybe we can come up with an Augusta with a master's song uh, with maybe the little chir- birds chirping in the background or something like that. He's uh, he's nice. already done one with uh, I know you did one with Aaron Flynn or the caddy. Yeah, that was that's actually the only collaboration I've done uh, to date. But that was that, that was really great fun. And he's a great singer. So that was yeah. I'd are, like there to do any, um, are there any golfers that are good singers out there that you know of? The only one that I kind of know of who's decent is KH Lee. Yeah, I did some, I did some, I'm lucky enough to do some content uh, with the PJ Tour for the President's Cup last year when I did the, the you, you, you mentioned the power of team love and I did one for the international team and then I sat down with a few of the players and I got them to sing lines and, and you know, like he can sing, he's got, he's got a nice little voice. Um, other than that, I don't know, actually. They're kind of, players are very coy about it. You know, a few of them say, oh, yeah, sometimes do karaoke, but, you know, they all play it down like I can't sing very well. But I've, there's got to be some half-decent singers out there. I just, yeah, I haven't I haven't discovered them yet. So, if, you had to, yeah. if you had to pick like, and take your best guess, who's going to be the best singer? Well, that's a good question. I think, you know what, I have a feeling that someone like, I reckon someone like Tommy Fleetwood could sing. I'd like to hear him sing. He looks like he could he could sing. <laughs> Not that you can really tell, but I don't know. With a long you can hair, go ahead you know, and you know. picture the music video, the fan blowing his hair, dish, you know, it would be a great song. Exactly. Got to be yeah. a Michael Bolton song or something that you could do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So, what's your process? I mean, when you when you identify a golfer first or a song first, I mean, kind of walk us through the process for how you come up with these things. Yeah. So definitely, it always starts with a golfer. You know, it's like. Okay, who do I want to do a song about? Who's, who's, where's, is, is there enough to write about this person, right? If I wanted to do a song about someone, maybe I'm, you know, a big fan of theirs, or maybe they're just a real character of the game. So I start off with that. Who am I going to do a song about? And then I find a song that's going to work for their name or, you know, or just kind of a style of song. That's, that's kind of how it happens. Um, and sometimes it's very simple by, you know, sort of lifting the name up. Like I did one, you know, talks about Lucas Glover, who obviously won this week. Um, and I did one to Luca uh, by Suzanne Vega, you know, just change it to Lucas, you know, my name is Lucas. Uh, so sometimes it's very simple like that. Other times it, you know, it doesn't necessarily even feature the player's name. It just, you know, I can just find a, a find a chorus hook that kind of works um, depending on what, what the narrative behind the song is. But um, yeah, I always start with, with the player anyway. Have you gotten many suggestions from people that follow you that say, Hey, here's a golfer, here's a song, you should do this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, people send suggestions all the time and people have sent me fully written out songs before and they're like, oh, oh I've written this song. Do you want to play it? And I'm like, well, that's not really how it works. Like part of my act is that I'm supposed to come up with the lyrics myself, you know. But yeah, this, uh, I remember this guy sent me a, a, full, a full, fully written out version of uh, a, a version of Roxanne by the police to... to <laughs> Cock rack, uh, uh, coke rack, j- chasing coke rack. So, yeah, but it does happen. I get, I get full songs. I get just suggestions of titles. But um, I've had some really good ones. You know, I've used, I've used two or three suggestions. I'm like, that's really good. I'm going to do that. Um, when someone says, "Oh, how about this, this song about this player?" I'm like, okay, yeah. Do you at least list them down in the credits somewhere? Idea inspired by. Always, yeah, always. Yeah, so someone someone suggested, um, you know, the famous Bubba Watson quote, everybody knows the aces. Um, and someone said, oh, you've got to do that. You know, you've got to do, you know, everybody wants to rule the world. Uh, you know, the, the tears for this, like that. that's a great suggestion. So I, I managed to uh, I managed to do that. And I yeah, credited the guy, you know, this guy gave me the idea. So, yeah, always, always going to credit if someone's got any great ideas, send them my way. We'll have to start writing down, Robbie. 
Yeah, we'll write them all down. <laughs> well, you mentioned but, uh, being at the President's Cup uh, and doing some stuff for that. Uh, any plans to go to Rome next month and do some stuff for the Ryder Cup? You know, I, I was having, I've had various conversations with various people um, over the last few months, and it just hasn't, it hasn't materialized, which is, it's a shame. I would love to, I'd love to be involved in some way. And I think I could do a really, you know, fun song for that. Um, but it hasn't happened this time. But then, I don't know, you win some, you lose some. You know, that I've, so I've been doing this for a few years now. And I, you know, I've had many, you know, exciting conversations. I'm like, oh, this is going to be amazing. And then, and then it falls through. So I'm kind of, I, I, I kind of, I'm, I'm very much now of the mind of, okay, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But I've been lucky enough to have, some really cool things that have worked out like doing the president's cup stuff. So I'll just take the, take the rough with the smooth, I guess. Yeah. Team Europe might not want to share you with, uh, with team USA. So that could be it. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Speaking of the Ryder cup, uh, sorry to interject a little bit into the interview parts. Uh, we are running a special where you can win some free stuff. And the word of the week is more town, more town golf club in England was the first course in the UK to host the Ryder cup. Uh, back in 1929. So, and I'll tell you what, if you're a listener and you were born uh, before <laughs> 1929, then you will give you an extra five points as <laughs> for winning the uh, the competition. So, it's uh, that course is in Leeds. Have you been to been to Leeds before? I have. I have been to Leeds, but I haven't. Uh, I haven't been to that that golf course. And if you do ask me that question, where was the first Ryder Cup hosted? There's no way I would have been able to answer that. So, well, that was yeah. the first in uh, first in the UK. So. All right. Yeah. Yep. It was the second one overall, I believe. So, okay. uh, so any, uh, any hints as to the next, uh, the next song or next golfer that you might be doing something for? I mean, not really. I mean, I've got, I've got on my, on my iPhone notes, I've got a list of, I don't know, about 25, 30 sort of song ideas there, but they kind of need something to happen. Like, you know, uh, it, it's a bit, it, it's a bit random if I just sort of throw a song, a, a song out about it about a certain player unless something's happened you know they've won something or something funny's happened so i kind of i just have this list that i'm kind of they're waiting to go when the right the right occasion takes place but um other than that i'm kind of nowadays most of the songs that i do are kind of more reacting to kind of new stories in golf rather than necessarily about a specific player there are still player ideas i've got but it's more like if something you know uh, something big happens and something big is happening most weeks let's be honest um, then I try and find a song, uh, a song about it, and if if I can, and if it works, and if I got time. Uh, so yeah, I don't I don't have any teasers yet, but there'll be something. Do you stick with a certain type of a genre or music style or something for for your song choices? Um, not necessarily. I mean, I, it has to be something that kind of works on the piano. Um, you know, but the the ones that I think work best, the kind of the the sort of ballads, the piano ballads, because mm. you can kind of you know, part of the, I think what, what works is when it's kind of sincere, you know, but it's like faux sincere, you know. Um, so I think they, they work when it's a kind of a slow ballad. But but no, other than that, as, as long as it works on the piano, it's got decent melody and, you know, there's enough enough lyrical content that you can kind of switch it around, then anything goes. So we shouldn't be expecting like a Weird Al Yankovic polka uh, version from Sam? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I mean, it was, it was going to be on my Christmas wish list, but apparently it's not. <laughs> so apart from music, obviously you're kind of connected to golf and doing it this way. And you mentioned you're not a good golfer, which uh, I can absolutely relate to, but have you ever had one of those moments, your best shot, or maybe a hole in one or something like that in your life that you just, maybe you could write yes. a song about that? I have one year, one year ago, nearly to the day I had, I had a hole in one my 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 own my first hole in one um it's funny i was just talking about it on on, on twitter a few days ago because um I, you know when i when it happened i you know obviously put it I, I, immediately i was like on twitter like oh, this is amazing this just happened you know the photo of me with the ball like everyone does um and then in in the practice round for the wind for the windham or on the wednesday program i think it was ben arn gets a hole in one right and uh and someone someone Tags me and says, "Sorry, isn't this the same day that you got your hole in one a year later?" And I was, and I looked it up, and I was like, "Yeah, it was. It's exactly a year later, you know." 
and he's one of my favorite players you know there's a big backstory behind behind that because i did a song about him and stuff and you know i probably consider him almost like a friend now you know we, we sort of message quite you know back and forth quite a bit um so it was kind of wild that he got a hole in one the same the same day uh, just a year on as me yeah. uh, the same club as seven iron so yeah it was uh, that was a special moment getting a hole in one uh, that's always been a, like a life ambition of mine so it was good to take that one off next is to go to augusta that's the next one on the list <laughs> where did you uh, where did you hit the hole in one so it's a course quite near me called Bulbury Woods. Um, it's about 10 miles from where I live. Uh, and I go and play with a friend a few times a year. Just the two of us played. It was a twilight round. The course was absolutely dead. You know, there's hardly anyone there because it was late in the day. Um, and that's the funny thing about it as well because, you know, there's this thing. You've got to buy everyone a drink, right, in the clubhouse. Uh, so I was, I was fully prepared to do that. I was like, you know what, I'm so happy. I don't care if it's going to cost me whatever, a few hundred pounds. But... Um, I got there to the to the bar and there's only the only guy that's in there is the guy serving the, the, is the barman <laughs> so I only had to get I got him a drink my playing partner a drink and that was it done that's funny we we talked to our guest last week was David Jones he's the UK golf guy you might follow him on Twitter oh yeah, yeah. but uh so we were talking to him last week and he said he got a hole in one recently he was playing super early in the morning got out by himself finished his first round it was like eight o'clock, eight thirty in the morning, Jonathan. Yeah, and he uh, gets a hole in one, playing by himself. Goes into the the clubhouse in the bar, nobody's there, <laughs> so he ends up just buying himself a drink and having breakfast and going out and playing some more. So um, nice, yeah. It, hey, if you're gonna get it one, then you can get away with it cheaply. That's uh, that's the way to do it. Exactly. Yep. So we do the same. We call it the quick nine. It's kind of a rapid fire question thing. So I want to ask you some fun questions here. Uh, what is the uh, what's the favorite golf course that you've ever played? You know what? I've played some really good courses lately. Um, I think probably the best one I've ever played is North Berwick that I played a few weeks ago when I was up in Scotland, uh, just before the Scottish Open. Just amazing links course, old style links course. Um, I don't really play very well on links on links course. I mean, I don't play very well anywhere to be honest. But links, I've, I've always struggled with. I don't know if it's the kind of you know, you have those sort of very firm, you know, the the, the ch chipping off those sort of tight lies. I just find really hard. Um, but it's an amazing course. The scenery is incredible of this, the, the the coast there uh, in Scotland. And that is just involves so much creativity. You've got like a wall running through a couple of the holes. Uh, yeah, that's cool. It was fun watching during the Scottish Open, I guess, practice rounds. A lot of the pros would go over and I guess do the same thing. Just go out and play. and. Yeah um yeah so that's definitely on the on the bucket list course for uh whenever jonathan and i can can head that way yeah do, do, definitely do it yeah besides robbie and i who would be in your dream foursome <laughs> uh mm, that's an interesting one i mean it, you know what it changed i get asked that a lot and it changes all the time and it's, sometimes i'm a bit like you know i'm not expecting it and i just sort of spur out names and i think later on, i'm like oh why did i say that but um <laughs> Uh, Tony Fina has to be on there just because really he kind of started all this thing, you know. Um, so, yeah, he's got to be there and he's a super nice guy. Um, I'm going to put Ben Arn in there now because uh, this is the first time he's got into there. But I, he's, you know, he's a good, he's good fun to spend time with. He's obviously a great, you know, he's a great player. And, and yeah, I, I've, I've come to respect him uh, a lot. So he's going in there. And then the other one, did they all have to be golfers or can it be anyone? Yeah, whoever. So the other one, and I often say this one because I just think it would be funny, is Tupac Shakur. So <laughs> he's, he's the fourth. Because, uh, yeah, I was a big fan of him growing up and I'd like the idea of, of him playing golf. I think that's the second time Tupac has made a foursome. Really? Uh, our, yeah, our, our, our other musician was a rapper and he actually listed Tupac as a guy. Nice. <laughs> are, are we going to see any raps with your music? That's This is an, a side uh, question. Yeah. I mean, not with me rapping, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I mean, I could I could collaborate with someone where I'm playing the piano and they're rapping. That's, that's possible. Well, you we need to take a, take a rap song, play the piano through it, like make it into a ballad, right? <laughs> and yep. then use the, the words for a golfer. So, yeah. All right. Who's uh maybe a Tupac? Who's your favorite band or musician of all time? Uh, that's probably 
and I think he has been cancelled not that long ago, but uh, it's Ryan Adams, I think, is 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 the one. He's kind of like, I love, I love his songwriting. I think he's, yeah. yeah, I think he's a very good musician. So, um, yeah, say him. If you had to make a choice between playing golf with your favorite golfer or playing in the band with your favorite musician, which one would you pick? Oh, God, that's hard. I'm going to say, I'm going to say the band one, just because... I don't know. Music was my kind of that was the, my first love, and 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 that's something that I haven't really experienced. Whereas, I suppose I haven't experienced the golf thing either. But you kind of felt closer to that in a way, whereas you never get close to actually playing with a with a an amazing musician. So I, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with that one. Good question. Yeah. All right. So we're big in logos. Last week we had a, a guy who who makes golf logos for incredible courses all over. Uh, do you have a favorite golf logo or, you know, course or, or company or something out there? Um, that's a good question. There's some really, I feel like, I feel like a lot of the really good ones, uh, and I could get shot down for this, but I feel like a lot of the really good ones are in the U S actually. And I don't sort of, I see people post these, these things. Like, oh, that's really cool. But I don't know enough about them to know, you know, what logo goes with what. Um, so I don't know. The, the, there's a good, the, the, the one that I like over here is, um, there's a, there's a cool course called fox hills um it's quite near london that's got a cool logo it's like it's, it's like a fox in a, in a top hat and it's, it, that's quite a nice one but i think some of the i say some of the really good ones that i've seen are in the uh, are over your side of the pond and i don't know enough about them to to, to give a, a proper answer because i'm sure there's some great ones that i haven't I don't no, know i'm sure i'm sure fox hills appreciates the uh show i might have to check that one out that sounds interesting yeah check it out uh, besides the the Masters, which we'll kind of default that as the answer, what golf event do you most want to attend? I think the, the, the Ryder Cup would have to be the one. I haven't been to one yet. Um, I was hoping for a while that this year might be the year, but yeah, no, that's that's definitely the one. I think the atmosphere would be incredible. Who do you think will win the Ryder Cup this year? Oh, and teams are not even know. set yet, so. Yeah, I go back and forth with this. You know, I really do think that that the course um that the start of course and everything does play into the european hands but the us team is on paper so much stronger so i think it's going to be a really close one i'm going to i'm going to say that we're going to shade it but it's going to be you know it's going to go right down to the wire a lot, a lot of the guys who's, who will be on team europe are playing very well right now so yeah um it's going to be tough. It'll be fine. But I, like you said, they, they tend to set the course up who uh, for the home team to, to benefit them. So they had a friend that played there probably a month ago. He and his son uh, were over there with family and they, while the wife and daughters were shopping, these two went out and played the course. And he said he hit a ball like off the green. You think it'd be in the fringe and he couldn't find it. So, <laughs> I mean, it's going to take accuracy, yeah. fairways and greens. And uh, a lot of times that's, that's Team Europe's advantage right there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and obviously with a lot of the guys having played the course before in tournament conditions as well, you know, and people like McIntyre having won there as well, I think probably helps. But yeah, it's it'll, it's going to be. I'm sure it's going to be close. That's the one thing I'm I'm sure about. Since this uh, golf and music thing have come together, what has been the best thing that's happened so far? I mean, I know I've already mentioned it, but it's it's definitely the Presidents Cup stuff, you know, because partly going out there in the first place and, you know, and being able to, you know, spend a bit of time with a couple of players, getting them to, you know, sing lines of the song and, and, and talk to them was cool in itself. But then I got to play the songs, the two team songs on the, on the first tee on the, on the Thursday. I mean, that's just, right. That was an incredible experience. Not that's kind of like pinch yourself stuff, you know? So yeah. that's definitely the, that's the pinnacle of, of where this, this has taken me so far, but I've had a lot of cool things, you know, I, you know, playing mini golf with Ben Arn is, is, is up there. Definitely. Uh, so I've had some, I've had some really cool experience. I'm very lucky really that um, what doing these songs has, has led to really, it's, I, do, I genuinely feel very lucky about that. All right. Final question. What is next? <laughs> um, you know what? I wish, honestly, I wish I knew. Um, you know, I've started since since the President's Cup stuff. You know, I, I've I did a little bit of content with the, with the PGA Tour up in Scotland. Um, you know, with with JT Post and Alex Morley, and then I'm, I'm hoping that I'll be able to do some more of that stuff. That's the my 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 hope is that there's going to be more, and 
you know, some of it may be your side of the pond. Um, hopefully spending, you know, spending a bit of time with some players uh, outside of the course, you know, getting to know them a bit and their kind of backstories or, you know, their kind of what they get up to outside of golf. That's something that I'd love to do. And I know that that's not necessarily the music stuff, which is where I got into this stuff. But the, the, the thing with the music stuff is I always feel like it's got a shelf life in a way, you know, like there's only so long that I can do that for. Um, and only so long I can co keep coming up with ideas, you know? So I don't know. That's, that, that's what I hope, but nothing is, there's nothing in concrete yet. Um, but, but that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's why that's what I'm hoping is going to happen. Well, you did uh, that, that segment you're talking about with, with Poston and, and, uh, Fleener and the, and the other folks that that was really well done you did an incredible job you're a great interviewer um so i, I hope you I, i'm sure you enjoyed that part where you just get to sit down and and talk and and kind of be real with these golfers and caddies and whoever so uh it was very well done uh and i could easily see uh you doing something like that so um, oh thanks Rob. I, I really appreciate that mate yeah no i i you know i, I it's funny because when i first started doing it i was if i felt very much out of my out of my comfort zone um, but I think once you kind of think of it, they're just like you, right? It's just like another person and you just sit down like we're doing now and it's just an informal chat and you just talk as you were with anyone else. Try not to be kind of starstruck or feel like you're, uh, feel like you don't belong. Um, even if you do, even if you do feel like that and then, yeah, I, but, but I, I appreciate that. It's, uh, I hope, hopefully there will be more like that. Yeah, I appreciate you saying that kind of that they're real people just like everybody else. I mean, uh, I'm not a great golfer. I'm better than Jonathan. Um, but I also, I, you know, had a roommate in college that was incredible with piano. He could hear something, play it immediately. So I've kind of always had this like jealousy of guys like yourself that can uh, play and, and do all these things. Um, love music. Uh, just not, uh, not very skilled. I, I didn't practice enough of that. I was busy doing other other things but um uh, so it's fun yeah. watching you do what you do um and you know to sit down with uh two nobodies like us to to chat this has been a been a joy for us hey no one's a nobody you know no it's, <laughs> it's, it's, been good. it's been good to chat and uh you know it's it's really no great sacrifice for me to spend some time chatting about god you know i like i love i love chatting about this sort of stuff to be honest um, absolutely you know it's, I, it's, it's it's funny actually i have a there's actually not that many of my friends who are kind of really into golf so i don't really have that much of an outlet to kind of talk about this stuff um you know aside from you know twitter so it's so it's nice to kind of have a in the flesh you know chat about golf and all things music and golf and whatever that's good plus now whenever you get invited to the masters next year you've got exactly. a place to stay I, I have a piano and we could do oh. a duet or something like that. So just let me know. No uh, way you got I, piano as well. There you go. That's I have, this has got to happen I, now. I have brought more random people uh from Europe. That's an honest thing to my house. Uh so you're not a you're not a random hitchhiker, so my wife will be completely fine with you <laughs> staying the night. So you well, Sam, really appreciate you taking the time again uh to come and be a part of this. Folks, if you haven't listened to his music, if you haven't already stopped listening to this chat here and gone and listened to his stuff, make sure to find him. We're going to post it on there. And uh, for Robbie, I'm Jonathan, and this has been the Whole Story Podcast.